What is going on, Governor? It's Chiscool here, and today we're going to talk about alliance leadership, which is absolutely crucial to the success or failure of your alliance. We're not talking about how and where to build a flag, but we're going to talk about how you, as an alliance leader, officer, or member, can offer leadership to your alliance. If you like videos where we offer leadership suggestions, you should definitely like and subscribe because this is a series we promised long ago, and we are a sponsored creator with Rise of Kingdoms. So my friends, what are we going to be talking about today? You know, a couple things. First, some of my leadership principles. Then, we're going to actually talk about a study that Google did demonstrating what makes for effective teams and some of the overlap with what I've seen to be true in leading alliances. Uh, and we'll wrap up with some closing thoughts. So with all that said, I want to share a couple of my personal leadership philosophies that I think are tremendously helpful in building a successful alliance. The first of which is that good leaders accept blame, deflect credit, and fix problems. If something goes wrong, it's about fixing the problem not fixing the blame. Fix the problem, not the blame. And when stuff goes well, give people credit for it, right? Like Libyan was the MVP in our last Ark of Osiris. That was freaking awesome. Trophies come in his way, <laughs> right? Like give credit to folks that are performing well and that are doing great stuff. Don't take credit for yourself. The next thing that I think is really crucial is an leader of an alliance, and particularly I think this is true in video games, is you need to communicate regularly. If you are not actively communicating the direction of the alliance, um, what we're intending to do next, uh, what sorts of things we value, all of that sort of stuff, then you can get into a situation where people make their own interpretations of what the alliance is doing, or they assume the worst. And that is something that you really want to avoid. Uh, a phrase I've often used here is that your silence is deafening, and it probably is. It probably is. So communicate cleanly and clearly what it is that the alliance wants to accomplish, is actively doing now, and thank folks for their contributions to the things that we have already accomplished. Now, up next is... <laughs> A philosophy that I learned a long, long time ago that seems to be true, which is that leadership is about repetition. The first time you say it, most people won't even read it or hear it. The second time you say it, maybe people will start to absorb it. The 20th time you've said it, they will actually believe what it is that you are saying, assuming that your actions follow through with what it is that you're saying. Um, let's see here. Ah, this is a good one. I see I've got my notes here. Um, another is that you get what you tolerate as a leader. If someone is misbehaving and you allow it to continue, you will continue to get that same style of negative behavior showing up. If someone is misbehaving, you must fix that immediately um, and cleanly and clearly. In a perfect world, you can solve those sorts of problems in private and direct messages rather than in front of the entire alliance because, um, look, like nobody wants to be embarrassed or called out or... Uh, otherwise raked across the coals in front of and a whole group of people. So um, as an example, if someone doesn't attend your Ark of Osiris, um, send a direct message to that person instead of in an alliance chat saying, how dare you not show up to Ark, right? Like fix the problems and do so in private. Be clear, but in private rather than embarrassing folks. And we'll talk about why that really matters a lot in a moment. Um, you always want to praise in public and criticize or fix problems uh, where possible in private. And a group problem-solving session is fine, um, but mm -mm, that can turn into a complaint fest and that can get really out of hand quickly. Now, as it turns out, these philosophies, this approach that I've been using for leading Legion uh, has been uh, in some ways validated by a study performed by Google. Google did uh, a study to identify the dynamics of effective teams. This was like Project Aristotle, and there were five factors that led to effective teams. Before I get into what those five factors were, I want to talk about the things that could not predict, could not determine whether or not a team would be successful. The first is that co-location of teams did not matter. Teams don't have to be all in the same place. Consensus-driven decision-making does not matter. Extroversion of teammates uh, and team members does not matter. You don't have to be extroverted to do well in a team. Um, the individual performance of team members does not predict the effectiveness 
uh, or were not significantly connected to the effectiveness of teams at Google. Uh, the amount of workload, load, the seniority of the team members, the size of the teams, the tenure, right? Those are not things that matter, which, by the way, I think is really interesting. For a while, I've been saying uh, that I take people to Ark of Osiris, the tenure that you've had with Legion does not matter. We're taking the high performers, <laughs> and, and that's who we're bringing back. Um, and we're taking the high power players, and, you know, if they don't perform, then that's the thing that we're going to talk about in private. Now, here were the five things that Google identified as the key factors for true leadership. And I think if you're an alliance leader or king of a kingdom, you need to hear this. The first is psychological safety. That's right, my friends, psychological safety. The feeling that as an individual, I am not personally at risk of being embarrassed, outcast, um, or otherwise raked across the coals in public. I'm not going to be called an idiot. I'm not going to be made fun of. And like, sure, some amount of teasing or whatever might be fine, but I will not be uh, seen as ignorant, incompetent, negative, or otherwise disruptive. Right. So creating that feeling of psychological safety aligns so cleanly with praising in public and fixing problems in private. The next is dependability. And this is why, as something that I've been doing as an alliance leader, um, we remove inactive players. There are zero inactive players in Legion unless someone goes inactive right before Mighty Governor. I might hang on to them a little bit so they don't get zeroed and then let them go after Mighty Governor, assuming they don't come back, and sometimes they do. Um, but if you can't depend on your alliance members, then it diminishes your contributions in some ways because you feel like I'm the only one contributing. So in Legion, you know everybody's contributing or they get asked to join one of our family of alliances that is less aggressive uh, and serious about their playing Rise of Kingdoms. The next thing that matters profoundly is structure and clarity, and I think this is really good. Uh, I send Alliance messages, and maybe I'll find one to just like read off toward the end of this in case you guys are interested in hearing how I communicate to my Alliance, um, because uh, you want to provide clear goals for the team, and I think this, for me, ties really into the next two, which are meaning and impact. Meaning and impact. What are we doing? Why are we doing it? Why does it matter? How do I know that I'm having an impact beyond just what I'm doing and beyond um, even like this alliance? What am I contributing? Right? Like I have said, like on more than one occasion, right? Like the the Rise of Kingdoms community watches what we're doing, right? Like this this is bigger than us, right? We're creating something much much larger, uh, and that is very very exciting. That is very, very exciting. So let's do this. Um, let me share just an example of a message that I send. And I send a couple of these typically um, every week. Um, but let me give an example of the sort of communication that I send. All right. So I sent this message all. The Karak ceremony is coming in just a few days. It's my expectation that every member will complete a tier of the event to 100, optimally continuing to push the difficulty that you tackle. If for some reason you think you won't get to 100, simply let me know. Although we've lost troops from war, all our commanders are stronger than ever. If you need help at any point, you can use the help function, and one of our higher power players will happily host rallies on your behalf. I personally have saved an insane amount of action points for this purpose. In a similar vein, optimally you hit level 70 plus before you need to start calling in rallies. This potentially means using an army expansion, and for me has always meant that I send two to four armies at a time to solo it. I will not be scheduling a time, or sorry, I will be scheduling a time to summon and battle the Karak bosses. The higher tier bosses are not going to be easy, but they should be fun. By the way, video will be on my channel of us battling the higher tier Karak bosses. Anyways, KVK is coming. Get strong, stay active, donate to Alliance Tech. Those who are very low on tech donations uh, and activity level will be thanked for their service and offered an esteemed position with one of our family and friend alliances. This is a slight elevation of what it really means to be an active contributor. I suspect this is the most calm Rise of Kingdoms will be ever again. Use this time to build up. Cheers, Chiskul. Right? That's the sort of message that I send to my Alliance members. Um, and you know, I've got, I've got dozens, dozens of these. These are actually like, I'm pretty happy with the messages that I've sent here, right? Here's, here's more of a rah, rah message that I sent and then we'll wrap up this video. Okay. Um, this is kind of interesting. This was a while ago. There was 
a report that someone had sent around. It was a player-generated report, I think, of the strongest alliances and rise of kingdoms. Um, and here's the message that I sent. Legion, together we have forged one of the greatest alliances in Rise of Kingdoms. According to one report, I don't know the origin, we're ranked seventh in overall power across all kingdoms. Thank you for everything you do to make our alliance strong. My personal objective has always been for Legion to operate similar to a semi-professional sports team. We play hard, always work to improve and learn, and value communication. We have low tolerance for drama and highly value teamwork. As KVK is on the horizon and kingdom migrations may be coming, we're going to tighten up some of our policies to maintain a competitive and highly active family of alliances. One, if a player goes inactive, four days, I'll send them a mail in game. On the next day, I'll invite them to join our farm alliance and make room for an active player in Legion. Two, at some point we may have a power minimum for our active members. No action on this front at this time. Our alliance short-term goals are as follows. One, level up on alliance tech. Two, grow our individual power. Three, strengthen our relationships with our allies, friends, and all alliances in our kingdom. To that end, over a dozen members responded to our request for officers. I love the enthusiasm and passion of our members. I read each of your responses and appreciate them tremendously. I will need the help from all of you in the coming weeks. With that said, effective immediately, Marie will be added as an R4 with immediate focus on building the relationships within our kingdom. Please join me in thanking Marie and taking this additional responsibility, and thank you all for your efforts to build Legion into what it has become. This is a much better illustration of the kinds of me message I was just talking about, where like our purpose is clear. Um, giving praise publicly um, to everyone for their contributions, highlighting that we've accomplished something, and like who knows if we'll be the strongest alliance after all this like migration stuff unfolds. Who knows what's going to happen, right? That's not the point. The point is to make people feel good, like they're doing something bigger than just, you know, logging into a game and smashing Calvins over and over. Um, anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, for me, Alliance leadership is tremendously important. We're going to be growing a pretty large officer corps, probably expanding it beyond the eight that we're allowed to have uh, as official officers, um, getting officers in waiting, officers in training kind of lined up so that even if our, you know, core eight are not online, that action can be taken decisively by an empowered individual. If you found this video helpful or interesting, you should definitely like and subscribe. Check out the link in the description. We're recruiting in Legion for our entire family of alliances. Not every leader operates the same way I do, but I will be doing everything within my power to help level up all of the members of our family and friend alliances. Until next time, my friends, you have fun smashing the kingdom.